Action Roller. Hi, I'm Reverend Parker here at Community Baptist Church for another Choir Bible Study. And we just want to welcome you again uh, as we learn what thus says the Lord. And the Lord has a lot to say to us today. And so we just want to thank him again for another day. I thank you all for continuing to join us. Thank you all for continuing to watch you, those who do watch, those who will watch. And uh, we just want to just do what God has us to do, amen? And so as we prepare now to go to God with a scripture and then a prayer, we'll get into our lesson today. And this is another Thursday. And we're going to come from Psalms 1. Uh, let's see. What's good? What's a good one? What's a good one? Let's go Psalm 6. All of it good. <laughs> let's remember that. And it reads, I have the King James Version, whatever version, whatever version you have, read along with us. And slow myself down. I get a little excited. This is a good word. And it reads, O oh Lord, rebuke me not in thy anger, neither chasten me in thy hot displeasure. Have mercy upon me, O oh Lord, for I am weak. Lord, O oh Lord, heal me, for my bones are vexed. My soul is also sore vexed. Uh, but thou, O oh Lord, how long? Return, O oh Lord, deliver my soul. O oh, have me. For thy mercy's sake. Oh, for save me, excuse me, Lord. Oh, save me for thy mercy's sake. For in death there is no remembrance of thee. In the grave, who shall give thanks? I am weary with my groaning all the night. Make I my bed to swim. I water my couch with my tears. My eyes is consumed because of grief. It waxed old. Uh, because of my enemies. Depart from me, all ye workers of iniquity. For the Lord has heard the voice of my weeping. The Lord has heard my supplication. The Lord will receive my prayer. Let all my enemies be ashamed and so vexed. Let them return and be ashamed suddenly. And that Psalm 6, I just read it in its entirety. Blessed to the hearing and reading of his holy word. Let us pray and continue to pray for Sister Julie Dormeyer, her loss of her uh, nephew, uh, and uh, all others who have lost loved ones. Amen. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, once again, we want to say thank you again for your word for just another day, Lord. You, you only one, Lord, that I know today, Father God. And I'm so glad that it's you, Father God, and no one else. Yes, Lord, you know exactly what to do. You know exactly what time to wake each and every one of us up, Lord, because you have us on your mind. We thank you for the blood that was shed by your son, Jesus the Christ. Yes, Lord, we thank you, O oh God, for uh, him dying for our sin. And then you rose him up again, O oh God, so that we may have life and life eternal. Yes, Lord, we ask, O oh God, that you forgive us of our sins, for they be many, Father God. As you continue to watch us, the cleansing and the blood of Jesus the Christ, we just want to say thank you, Lord. As we pray this prayer in the name of Jesus, thanking you, Lord, for giving us a name to pray in, Father God. We pray to, Father God. We know that, Father God, that you will see us through every situation, Lord. There's nothing that you don't know about any of us, oh God. And we just want to say thank you, Father God. We want to say thank you, Father, for the gifts that you've given us, Lord. Yes, Lord. We just want to say thank you, Father. Father God, we ask right now that you continue to be with uh, our pastor, Father God, that we lift him up, asking you, Lord, to just continue to watch over him, continue to just uh, mold and shape him into the pastor you would have him to be, Lord, as you continue to build him up where he's torn down, Lord. Yes, Lord, we ask you to be with this family, Father God, uh, who, who needs you very much, Father God. We all stand in the need of you, Lord. There's nothing we can do without you. So, Father God, continue to build him up, be with his uh, sisters as they uh, are traveling on the road, Lord, and uh, just continue to be with them, Lord. Uh, we ask this in Jesus' name. Lord, we ask, for oh God, to continue to be with Sister Maria and her family, and continue to strengthen her, build her up where she's torn down and afflicted, oh God. And Lord, strengthen her back right now, Lord. Uh, she uh, 
needs that rest in her back, Father God, and her muscles, Lord. Lord, just kind of be with her, comfort her, guide her, give her that rest in you as only you can do. Be with her daughter, Hannah, Lord, her son, Trevor, Father, just be with that whole generation, Lord. Just be with her, Father God, because, uh, Lord, she's highly favored in your sight. Lord, we are all highly favored, Father God. We just thank you tonight for what you're about to do. Lord, I ask you to be with my father, Father God, and me, Lord, as you continue, Father God, just, uh, Lead and guide me to what you would have me to say, Father God. I thank you, Lord. Uh, keep me on that narrow path with you, Lord. Even though I want to stray away, Lord, you continue to <laughs> turn me around, Lord, and just keep me on that narrow path with you. I thank you, Lord, because I know that you're watching over me, that you're directing my path. And I just want to say thank you, Father. I have to be with each choir member, Lord, especially Julie Thormeyer right now, Lord. You just I want to lift her up to you right now, and I'm also for Nancy, Lord, her, her sister's uh, son, Father God. Uh, we know, Lord, that we all stand in line, Father God. We just don't know where we stand. So, Father God, uh, that's why it's important that we tell somebody, anybody, and everybody about you, Lord, and how great thou art, and how you save each and every one of us, and how you've given us that free gift, Lord, that eternal life with you, Father God. Help us all to receive the word that you've given us, Lord. And Lord, we just ask you to be with, uh, like I said, all the choir members, Lord, no matter what they're going through, Lord, you will see us. Be with the whole community Baptist uh, family, Father God, that we continue to praise and worship and glorify you uh, each and every day, lifting up your name because you're worthy uh, to be praised. You're worthy to be lifted up, Lord. And we just want to say thank you again, Lord, for your grace and your mercy, Lord, that follow us all through the day, all our lives, and you'll be here. We're so thankful, Father God. Lord, we ask right now that you uh, give us a word from you, Lord, a divine word from you. Give us understanding and clarity. And the lesson we're about to uh, both upon, Father God, and we just know that you will, Father God. And so, Father God, help me to uh, decrease the Holy Spirit, we can increase the day. Uh, so that the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. O Lord, thy strength and thy redeemer. This be prayed in the mighty name of Jesus the Christ, the Son of the Lord God. Amen. And so we are ready now to get into our lesson here. And we're coming from Ephesians chapter 4, verses um, 11 through 16. That's Ephesians chapter 4, verses 11 through 16. And this is the day that the Lord has made. Even a glorious day, God has made a way out of nowhere. The sun is shining bright, the air is fresh, the sky is blue, and the wind is blowing through my head. Yes, I just want to say thank you. And so as we uh, read this lesson today, uh, we're going to read it, then we're going to gleam over it and see what uh, thus says the Lord. Amen. Amen. And so we're going to start at verse 11 through 16. Read along with me. I'm a King James version, but whatever version that you have, uh, knock the dust off the Bible, then uh, let's uh, uh, read this scripture here. And it reads And he gave some apostles. Uh, and some prophets, and some evangelists, and some pastors and teachers. For the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ, till we all come in the unity of the faith and the knowledge of the, of the Son of God, unto a perfect man, unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. Amen. That we henceforth be no more that we excuse me, henceforth be no more children tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the slight of men and the cunning and craftiness whereby they lie and wait to deceive. But speaking the truth in love may go up into him in all things, which is the head, even Christ, for whom the whole body fittingly joined together and compacted by that which every joint supplied, according to the effectual working in the measure of every part, 
maketh increase of the body unto the edifying of itself in love. And I just read Ephesians chapter 4, verses 11 through 16. Blessed to the hearing and reading of the word. And the key verse comes from Philippians chapter 1, verse 6. And it reads, being confident of this very thing, that he who has begun a good work in you will complete it. Uh, will complete it until the day of Jesus Christ. Amen. And so now we're going to get into the lesson. It should be on the monitor. And here it says, measuring your growth. Amen. And um, well, let's read it together. Some things are easy to measure. Your height, your clothing size, your weight. But how do you measure spiritual growth? Question. How can you determine how far you've come in your walk with the Lord? Question. God works in the lives of his children in different ways at different times. But as you pray, study the Bible, and worship regularly with other Christians, you should notice several changes. One, quick and genuine repentance. When the Holy Spirit convicts, convicts you of specific sin, you go immediately uh, to Jesus to confess and turn away from it. Rejoicing in trial. Spiritual battles, battles become more intense, but you want to thank God for them. Three, increasing desire to obey. Sin becomes less attractive. You find delight in following his command. Four, eagerness to share. As you discover his loving kindness, you can't keep the joy to yourself. You tell others what he's doing in your life. Are you becoming more like Jesus each day? No matter where you are in your relationship with him, you can cling to this promise. He who had begun, began a good work in you will perfect it until the day of Christ Jesus. Philippians uh, 1, chapter 1, verse 6, New, New American Standard Bible. And all together at the bottom, Lord, make me more like you. Complete the good work you have begun. And amen. 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 And so, as you can see here, this is measuring your growth. And Lord, let me tell you, we need to measure our growth. There should be some changes in you. There should be some things that are going on within you uh, that people see that change in you. And the first question is, how do you measure your spiritual growth? That's a good thing. How do you measure your spiritual growth? Well, one way, as you know, is that it says, as you pray, as you pray, you should have a prayer life. Um, you should study the Bible. You should want to worship God wherever you're at, not just on Sunday, but every day. We need to be worshiping our Lord and Savior. We need to be lifting up his name. We need to be letting him know that, Lord, I'm so thankful that you have saved me. I'm so thankful that you still extend your hands out to me each and every day. I'm so thankful that you call me and you pull me out of darkness into your mom's life. I mean, that's what uh, spiritual growth, that's how it's measured. But I know a lot of times people, uh, they come down to the altar and they say, I want to give my life to Christ, and they don't take me any further. You know, some of them don't uh, get baptized. Some of, a lot of them won't come to Bible study. And uh, we here at Community Baptist has a, a beginning Bible study class for you. Um, and that's right now as we uh, are still not having services, but we still teach the class on Saturday at 2 p.m. So you can still get your study in. But those who are still green, those who are still uh, based in Christ, and you need to have that because that's your foundation that you're building on. I mean, you're building on the foundation of Christ, but then you've got to continue to add a layer and another layer and another layer to continue to build uh, 
of your uh, spiritual growth in you. It says, how can you determine how far you come in your walk with the Lord? Well, you can determine that. That's another question. By how are you responding to things? How do you, are, if anything changes with you, do you see the change? You should notice the change about yourself. You know, how you used to be and how you are now. Are you still trying to hang out with the same crowd? Because I'm going to tell you, that crowd that you're trying to hang out with, they will notice the change in you. And you need to be aware that uh, God's going to put that spotlight on you. And either you share uh, or they're going to know that something's different about about how you carry yourself, about how you uh, treat others, um, and so forth and so on. Um, it says, God works in the lives of his children in different ways at different times. And that is so true because God is working in each and every one of us, each and every day that he wakes you up. He's trying to draw you closer. He's trying to supply you with what you need uh, in order to succeed in this world and, and, and the world to come. He wants you to be, isn't it great God wants you to be in this kingdom? I mean, you could be, he could have allowed you to go straight, just continue to be a straight. But God so loved the world that he gave his own begotten son, John 3 16. You should know that. That should be the first thing you should know that God so loved the world. Now, why would you do know? But you got to take it further. You got to take it a little bit further. You got to measure your progress. I say, each and every day. Did I stumble today? How much did I stumble today, Lord? Do you even ask God questions? Do you even talk to God? You know, so to quit talking to yourself and talk to God. You know, because it's important that you know that you have a God that's living. He's our living Savior. He sits at the right hand of the Father, and He's waiting for you to pray to Him. He's waiting for you to talk to Him. And so take that quiet time to have a little devotion. Just to speak to him, just to say, good morning, Father, my heavenly Father. It's so great to that you woke me up and started me on my way. And Lord, you woke me up at the right time. Every day, you have a set time for each and every one of us. No matter how much we want to lay there, you're going to give us that nudge. You're going to stir up that mess to get us out of that to get our feet on the floor, to get us moving, because we have things for us to do. You have divine appointments for each and every one of us. It says here, but as you pray, study the Bible and worship regularly with others, you should know, yeah, notice several changes. Several changes. Notice several changes. And there are, they have mentioned four here. And we're just going to go over those four here. It says, quick and genuine, genuine repentance. And it says, when the Holy Spirit convicts you of a uh, specific sin, you go immediately to Jesus to confess and turn away from it. And that is so true that it says in 2 Corinthians 4 and 16, for which cause we faint not, but though our outward man perishes, yet the inward man is renewed day by day. See, it's a day-by-day -day process. So he said the Holy Spirit convicts you of your sin. And you will know when you sin because you're going to get that guilty feeling of whatever you're doing uh, that you need to go and repent to God. And that's a daily process because we're not perfect, you know. And thank God that we have a Lord that is is perfect that knows what he's doing. Um, and so we need to turn away uh, from the sin that we do. We need to confess our sins before him. And we need to have a genuine heart when we do it. Uh, because uh, as we had a sermon the week, uh, the week before, it was the measurement of your faith. And your faith in God, knowing that he forgives you time and time again. And, and your sin can be something so simple you don't even know that you're doing it. You don't even know that. You're just your thoughts sometimes. I know in me, I'm just, okay, I'll just do it. 
my thoughts sometimes it's like lord help me to do it you know that was a bad thought but if we if i allow that flesh to, to do what it wants to do boy i will be happy and so i'm so glad that he ooh, thank you lord that he is a living savior and that he convicts me of those thoughts soon as i have it i, I have to go and go lord forgive me but I, I, I'm, and I'm on it. I know not what I'm doing. So, Lord, I need you. You know, God told us that we didn't know what we were doing. He told us all the things about what they do. And it's so true. And so we need to trust Him and we need to um, turn away from those sins and we need to confess our sins um, to Him, asking for forgiveness. Because uh, it says, when the Holy Spirit convicts us. And so we need to understand that. That having that spirit, you know, sometimes we mature in it, and sometimes we don't stay in it. You should be maturing in it, and so you, you need to um, stay with it. I have a whole question, but I don't think I want to. Uh, the next thing it says uh, is rejoicing in trial. Spiritual battle become more intense, but you want to thank God for it. You want to thank God for every spiritual battle you have. Because think about it. Before you came to Christ, you didn't even know you were having a spiritual battle. The devil was just whooping you all up and down. You're going, why am I having these problems? Well, there was a spiritual battle uh, 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 going on around you. And still is. Just because you came to Christ, don't mean that it stopped. It just means that the devil now don't want you to believe. Right now, the devil don't want you to pray. Right now, the devil don't want you to study. Right now, the devil don't even want you to assemble together and have fellowship with other Christians. You're in a battle. The devil ain't going to quit because you came to God. It, it gets better because you have the living Savior. But let me tell you, he ups the ante on it. You know, it's like playing poker with your life. He's going to throw down some more chips and go, I got this. And what do you got? And you got to say, I got Jesus. And if you ain't got Jesus, and if you don't know him in a part of your sins, you need to get to know him. That's why it's important that you study the word every day. You need to have that renewing of your mind. You need to uh, confess your sins. You need to let God know that, Lord, I'm in this battle, but God tell you that vengeance is mine, says the Lord. It's God that has already worked this thing out. Hey, look, the devil already knows where he's going. He's trying to get a few more candidates to sign up on his roll sheet. And you don't want to sign that sheet. You want to uh, check in with the father, make sure your name is uh, checked. Because God had a list of everybody in there. And you need to check in, make sure your reservation is in with Jesus Christ. Amen. Uh, so that you may have eternal life. It says here that third one, increasing the desire to obey. Increasing the desire to obey. Oh my God, there we go. Obedience oh, better than sacrifice. It says sin becomes less attractive. Uh, you find delight in following his command. And that's our problem. We love darkness. We love darkness. And the Bible tells us that we love darkness. And so we need to come and stay in the light. We need to know that uh, Jesus has already paid the price before. Those of you who are still struggling, uh, we all struggle, but some of us are struggling more than others. Uh, God says, I give you my joy so that you might be full of joy. Don't forget that you have joy. No matter what, the devil puts that in your mind. You ain't joyful today. Oh, you feel miserable today. You're going, no, I don't feel miserable. I might be feeling a little miserable, but I am feeling that miserable. I still got joy in me, and I'm going to start praising God right now. You have to know that your, your desire to obey what God has already uh, asked for you, so it makes sin less attractive, you know? You got to understand that we have to stay to show ourselves approved unto God uh, a workman that needed uh, not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. That's 2 Timothy 2 and 15. We need to continue to study 
to show ourselves approved to who? To God. Unto God. I ain't trying to beat show nobody else up. I ain't trying to be all of that, right? Uh, we need to just understand that there is a God who cares about us and that he wants that new man, as it says in Ephesians 4 and 24, that new man uh, that God has given, that's inside of us, needs to come out. And it says here that he put on that, he you got to put on a new man, that's Ephesians 4 and 24, which after God is created in righteousness and truth. Holiness. You have to understand that God has, there's a newness in you, and you need to uh, hold on to that newness. Um, and so we all sin, but God has made a way for us to come to Him and repent of our sin. Uh, in Romans 6 and 6, it says, Knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him, that the body of sin might be destroyed, and henceforth we should not serve sin. Get that? We, should, we don't have to serve it. And that's what we've been doing. We've been just walking around like bartenders and waitresses with drinks in our hands, like, hey, I'm serving you, hey, we're party over here, hey, party over there, hey, you know. Uh, dropping it like it's hot, hey, you know, we ain't supposed to be serving it. We, we, are, we are new creatures created in God's image. And so he, he, it's a newness that he uh, put in us, a, a newness that he wants us uh, to uh, hold on to, um, and, to be, and, and to know. Because he says, for sin shall not have dominion, uh-uh, Romans 6 and 14. But sin shall not have dominion over you, for ye are not under the law, but under God's grace. And that's important. You know, God didn't, Jesus didn't come back to get rid of the, uh, uh, the law. He came back to uh, fulfill the law. And so he fulfilled the law. But the law was just our schoolmaster showing us how far off we are from God. You know, it was our tutor and showing us how bad you really sin. Okay? And that's what the law was really about. Because you got to understand, before the law, we didn't have no law. Right? Thank God that we put some laws in there because, you know, people still going crazy right there. They're still doing silly stuff. You know? And we got to understand that anything that is against God is a sin. I don't care how you wrap it, I don't care what bow you put on it. Sin is sin. And so we need to uh, increase our desire to want to obey him and follow his command. Oh, okay, number four is an eagerness to share. Wow, that's, I like that. Eagerness to share. It says, as you discover his loving kindness, you can't keep the joy to yourself. You tell others what he's doing in your life. And that's so important. That when you're first, when you first are born again, when you first receive Christ, and, and you've got that, that, that spirit of God moving in you, you want to tell somebody how what God is doing in that. You want to open your mouth and go, oh, I say, I know that's how I was. I was walking around like a kid in the candy store going, you know what happened to me last week? I got saved. <laughs> I get saved. He let me in. He allowed me to come into his kingdom. I am now a child of God. And you know, people were like, really? Yeah, this feels good too. But then the attacks start coming and it didn't feel so good. It was like, wow, okay. Uh, something ain't right about this. And the rightness wasn't about it was because now I needed to uh, grow with Christ. I need to know how to fight this fight, this good fight that the Lord has uh, uh, put in, uh, put here for us to fight. Well, I don't necessarily, he does the fight. I just have to stand and, <laughs> and put up my dukes and he throws the punches. Uh, but, you know, God is the one, you know, you want to tell somebody, anybody, everybody about what God is doing in your life. And then, you know, we're all a walking testimony. 
And in every testimony, you know that there is a, uh, a test that comes with that testimony. And a lot of people don't want to take that test. They just want the money. But I'm going to tell you, when you're asking for a testimony, you're going to get that test. And so don't be discouraged because you got a right cross because you didn't do what you were supposed to do. You, the right, you got a right cross and a left cross and you're getting punched all over the place and you're not bobbing and weaving and ducking and diving. You ain't got your hands up. You ain't got on the full armor of God. You, you're not doing what the word of God is asking you to do. And that's renewing your mind, not being conformed to this world. Because we all have a measure, measure, measure our growth. Oh, Lord. Jesus. Uh, so like, I, feel, I always feel like Noah when I do that and I start to study. <laughs> Got it. And so we're all uh, uh, being measured, you know, with our growth. And we all got different levels. You know, some of us get it right away, and some of us, some of us just uh, uh, stutter along. <laughs> I'm sorry. So well, some of us just stutter and rumble and bubble and tumble along as we try to learn the word of God and try to learn what God has for us. But God has so much for all of us, and he's already blessed us. It says, are you becoming more like Jesus today, each day? No matter where you are in your relationship with him, you can cling onto his promise. He who began a good work in you will perfect it until the day of Christ Jesus. Philippians 1 and 6. And so you have this promise that God is molding and shaping each and every one of us. Uh, sometimes you have to ask God to put you back on that part of the earth and continue to shave things off that is not of the kingdom. God ain't gonna let you come in there with that dirty, nasty stuff. You ain't coming in the kingdom like that. So you can just forget about it. You ain't coming in there half stepping of God and having that either. You're going to have to fully commit yourself to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. You're going to have to fully commit. And he knows your heart. So you can't deceive him. He knows your thought. So you can't outthink him. He knows all things. And that's what's so amazing. Who can know our Lord and Savior? Um, who could we compare him to? Nobody. There's nobody we compare our Lord and Savior to. And so we are this is measuring your growth and you should know these things um, and you should be applying them to your life so that you'll know what's going on because I'm going to tell you, the devil knows that you've given your life to Christ and he's going to end you up. He's going to send, uh, first he just sent that new recruit to you and you defeated him and you walk down the aisle and you see Christ in your life wherever you're at. And then he up the end. Because it says in, in John 17 and 9, Jesus said, I pray for them. I pray not for the world, but for them which thou hast given me, for they are gone. God has prayed for us. He says, I ain't prayed for the world, but I prayed for them who you've given me. And we've all been chosen by them. And so we need to study the word. We need to Stay in prayer and study, study the word, stay in prayer, and then just worship him. And you got to worship him in spirit and truth. They say that those who worship must worship him in spirit and in truth. And so as we continue our growth, you know, and learning what thus says the Lord, uh, we know that we have a Savior that is already prayed for us. The Savior who told us in John uh, 16, 33, these things I have spoken unto you that in me ye may have peace. In the world ye shall have tribulation. See, you shall have tribulation. But be of good cheer, I have overcome the world. Jesus has a mind to us that we're, we're not going to have tribulation. He said, you are going to have tribulation. So it's time to uh, tighten your belt up a little bit, put on your boxing gloves, put on your kung fu outfit, whatever it is that you got to put on, and be prepared. You got to put on that full armor of God and be prepared to fight the good fight of faith. I'm trusting in our Lord.
and you will grow. You will grow if you allow the Lord to help you. Because he said he will see you through it. And so that's all I have for this. There was more, but you know, I'm not going to keep you too long. Um, so continue to grow with Christ. Continue to know that he was the ultimate sacrifice. And uh, ask the Lord to make you more like Christ. Um, because he will begin a good work. Uh, he will complete it until the day of Christ's return. And he's coming back. So, you know, you want to be found faithful. Amen. I'm Reverend Parker. Said thank you again for another choir night to study. God bless you all. We'll see you again. Amen. May God keep you with us. <laughs>